immunology summary for AQA AS biology. Uh, this covers everything in the immunology unit apart from vaccination. We'll make a separate movie for that one. So, immunology, protection from antigens and pathogens. First of all, we need to discuss non-specific and specific immunity. Non-specific, which at GCSE you might have called passive, is where you've got natural defense mechanisms, automatic defense mechanism that are non-specific. So skin as a layer, tears with enzymes in, mucus, stomach acid. All of those things are physical barriers. In addition, you've got white blood cells called phagocytes, and they will attack pathogens by following chemical signals that they release and engulfing them. And that is automatic and does not uh, have any specificity. Alternatively, there is the specific immunity, which at GCSE you would have called active immunity, and that is where you have an antibody response. The antibody response is controlled by B cells, and that's called a humoral response. Humoral is to do with uh, body fluid. And then the cell-mediated response, the response by cells specifically, uh, and controlled by cells, and that is the T cell response. Both of those are unique and involve antigen recognition, but consequently they are slow. A really important part of this unit is understanding that cells have surface markers on them. Now cells recognize self, in other words cells are identified as being part of you, uh, because they have specific molecules called major histocompatibility complex molecules. We're all unique. That's where we get um, tissue type from. You have your own tissue type, which may match someone else's and be similar, but uh, more often than not, it's different from whoever's sitting next to you. You've got different tissue type. And that's where uh, difficulties with uh, organ donation and um, transplants comes from. So here we are, we've got an MHC molecule sitting on the surface of the plasma membrane. All of your cells have the same MHC molecules on them, and that is a recognition of you. The cells belong to you. Anything that has not got the MHC molecule on it is regarded as a foreign material and would be attacked by your body. So let's consider a, sen a scenario here. We've got uh, a phagocyte, and that encounters a foreign material and it will engulf it as you see here. Elsewhere in your body we've got a slightly different scenario. This is a bacteria invading a cell. It's not the cell's choice. The bacteria is invading the cell. But the same thing uh, results which is a bacteria inside a vesicle inside of the cell. Now the next thing that happens is the same for both cases. Lysosomes in the cell merge with the vesicle, as shown here, and then MHC molecules enter the vesicle and bind to debris from the uh, material, and they bind to a specific protein, which would be regarded as an antigen. An antigen is any protein that is recognizable by antibodies, so it's a particular shape of protein. Uh, this complex with the MHC molecule and the antigen is transported to the surface and the phagocyte, in the case of the first scenario, becomes an antigen presenting cell. Now it's very important that you understand the difference between the two following scenarios. The first scenario we're going to talk about is when an infected epithelial cell, that second example, the, the, the infected epithelial cell becomes an antigen presenting cell. Here uh, the antigen is presented by the MHC molecule and a T cell receptor has bound to that. You can see this in this microscopic magnification. Now the response of the T cell to an epithelial cell or a normal body cell presenting antigen is to become a cytotoxic T cell and it will kill the cell that is infected. Now um, I'm going to uh, expand a little bit on this, it's a little bit beyond what you need to know, but 
uh, it's a really exciting uh, little bit of biology. The T cell produces a protein called perforin, which is like a, a, a tube or a pore that actually enters into the pla uh, plasma membrane. And then the T cell produces another protein called a granzyme. And the granzymes flow into the cell and cause the cell to commit suicide. So that's how the T cell reacts in response to uh, a body cell presenting antigen. Uh, scenario two is when a phagocyte presents an antigen. The phagocyte has hunted down a bacteria or virus and engulfed it and processed it and presents antigen to the T cell. This T cell, which again has a receptor that exactly fits the antigen on the MHC, this T cell becomes a helper cell. The job of the helper cell is to uh, go from B cell to B cell, identifying a B cell that would actually uh, bind specifically to the antigen. Once it locates that B cell, it activates it. That B cell then divides by mitosis to form many, many copies of itself, and these become plasma cells. Plasma cells are cells that um, produce antibodies and this series of images represents the B cells producing countless antibodies having been activated. So here's a summary of what the B cell will do. A B cell will either, in response to uh, activation by the T helper cell, will either become a plasma cell, which will give you a primary res response, and that takes one to two weeks to happen, or it will become a memory cell, uh, which means that it's stored in the body for a long period of time and if that antigen occurs again uh, you get an immediate response which is much bigger and much faster and that's called a secondary response. Now here's a diagram of um, influenza virus. Now you can see if you look at the chart over time that the influenza virus has many different forms and that's because viruses find a way around this secondary response system that, that an, uh, organisms have got. Uh, we have flu once and we become immune to a repeat infection but the virus is very clever it mutates and its surface proteins change and that means when it reinfects us, maybe a month later or a year later, we don't recognize it and we can be infected again. So the virus is able to persist in many different forms. This diagram indicates that fact. Uh, we've got a virus on the left hand side, uh, which the body will produce antibodies too, but the virus will infect us for maybe a week or two weeks, make us ill, make lots of copies, and those virus particles will be released. Uh, maybe a month or a year later, the virus comes back and infects us again, but in the meantime, it's mutated and its surface proteins are slightly different. Body doesn't recognize it. Secondary response is evaded by the virus. Now let's have a look at the antibody in detail. Uh, the antibody has two protein parts. One is called the heavy chain and one is called the light chain, shown in different colours here. Additionally, the heavy chain and the light chain both have two separate regions. The constant region, by its name, suggests that it is invariable, the same amino acid sequence every time. But there is a variable region which has a slightly different amino acid sequence each time and that gives the antibodies their variation and specificity. We have millions of different antibodies uh, that recognize different potential antigens in our bodies. So um, the reality of life is that a bacterium, as shown here, will actually have many, many different antigens on its surface and our body will produce many, will activate many different B cells, each of which recognize an antigen on the bacteria. Now what we would do if we were looking to make a scientific use of this, we would identify the B cell that has the best response. So let's consider this B cell shown. This B cell is producing antibodies to the yellow antigen and we have identified that as being the most useful 
in our scientific quest. So what we do is we select that B cell and we combine it with a cancer cell. And the reason we do that is the B cell actually will divide many times but it has a limited life. Cancer cells by their own ex their very existence is that they are immortal. They constantly divide and never uh, run out of the capacity to do that. So what scientists can do is uh, mix B cells that they want with the antibody we want with cancer cells, add a little bit of detergent to weaken the membrane and we can get the cells to combine and form a merged cell which is called a hybridoma and that is a constantly dividing cell that produces antibodies. That would then be kept uh, frozen or in a fridge and taken out and grown up every now and again to produce antibodies and those can be used in science. Finally, let's have a look at a little summary of production of monoclonal antibodies. Uh, here we've got a little mouse which is having an uh, antigen in, injected into its uh, intestinal cavity, so into the peritoneum. That will produce a primary response of antibodies. Two weeks later you can inject the same antigen again and that will give a much stronger secondary response. Then, after that has developed, you would take blood and you would test the blood for antibodies against your antigen. If you have a good, strong response, very good antibodies, you can then take that blood and you can make hybridomas. You would then select the best monoclonal antibody from that and uh, you would then use that therapeutically. Lots and lots of stuff in this. You need to play it over and over again. Use it in conjunction with your book. Uh, use the two together and uh, Hopefully that will explain the module much more clearly to you.